Flash forward to Bones Row 3 printer. I know we put you through a lot of testing, but I promise you it's going to be worth it. There's no more testing beyond this. Actually, I had to print one more print on the printer. Oh, no! Oh yes. So let's get right into it. So I needed to check that the printer could actually print a 3D bench sheet from beginning to end so I can judge the quality of the prints of the printer. I had to print one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and even ten prints on the printer before I could get one complete 3D bench. And that was because one of the issues I ran into was because the print bed wasn't leveled. So I needed to calibrate the printer to make sure that when the nozzle was moving along the bed, it was always at the same level at different points and it accounted for the shift in level on the print bed. Because the print bed warps over time, it's important to actually calibrate your printer every so often. After I calibrated the printer, I still ran into a few issues where I was experiencing layer shifts between the prints. So I did a bit of research online and found the Matter Hacker video, which explains how to deal with layer shift. One of the advice that really did help me when I was printing was actually to check the temperature that I was printing the PLA. So my PLA that I was using can run anywhere from 210 degrees to 230. I was running it at 210 when I was having all the errors, so I increased it to 230. Things did seem to improve when I did print of my smaller 3D Benchy. But then I noticed when I was observing the printer, when I was trying to print a larger 3D bench, was that it would dip at to about 130 degrees at key points within the print um, and then rise back up to 230, which created these layer shifts that I actually see within my print. So I realized it wasn't just the temperature that might be an issue. It's actually the print head actually dropping to 130 at key points. I don't know how to actually fix this. I might do a bit of research online, but leave a comment down below if you've experienced this before and if there are fixes online, maybe in the Facebook group or the Reddit groups for the printer that um, I should know about. So if you want to test your printer against a 3D bench sheet, I actually found a file on Thingiverse and the actual people that made the 3D bench sheet also have a website which actually gives you a guide to actually judge your printer against. I've left a link down below to those websites. So the first item I'll be judging the 3D bench sheet against is how smooth the hull is. So when you look at the 3D bench sheet itself, the layer shifts ruin um, the actual clean look of the hull itself. But in the areas where there isn't any layer shift, it's quite smooth. You can still see the lines when you look really closely of each layer. Um, but, you know, because of how smooth it looks at those key points, um, and, you know, taking into account the layer shift, I'll probably give it a 5 out of 10 for, you know, the work it's done here. The next item that I'll judge the printer against is its symmetry. So when you look at the 3D Benchy head on, you can actually see that the printer did quite well to actually balance and actually repeat the pattern on both sides of the 3D Benchy. Um, the layer shift obviously doesn't help, but I can see that the printer actually, you know, can sim print, you know, symmetrically, um, and there's no warping in sizes of the O-shaped ob objects um, within the print itself. So I'll probably give it about a six out of 10 um, for symmetry. The next item I'll be judging the printer against is plain horizontal surfaces. So when you actually look at say the flat surfaces where the bucket on the back, um, the actual deck itself on the actual 3D bench itself, you can see that, you know, even at printing at standard mode, um, you know, there's a lot of bumps and warping. Um, it's tried its best to actually print the, at these areas really nice and smooth, but, um, you know, it didn't really do a good job. So I'll probably give it maybe a four out of 10 for actually it's flat surfaces printing. I suppose if it was printed at a higher um, level, maybe it will be a lot more smoother, but printing at standard mode, it doesn't, you know, really bode well for kind of flat surfaces. So the next item that I'll be judging the printer against is tiny surface details. So the people that made the 3D Benchy actually printed the free hashtag 3D Benchy on the back of the boat. When you look at my 3D print of the 3D Benchy, you can actually see that you can barely even see it. Um, and you can, it's not readable. You can see the printer tried to print it, um, but you know, 
it's a fail from my you know from my opinion and i i think it's probably a one out of ten rating for this um tiny detail the next item i'll be judging the printer against this cylindrical objects so when you look at the 3d bench itself you can see the flue on the top of the boat and key circular items um, like on the back of the boat and you know it's done a good job you know they are you know cylindrical they are round they're smooth so i'll probably give it um, a six out of ten and that's because um, there are a few layer shifts that you can see at key points and it is still quite bumpy it's not completely smooth but i'm sure if it was printed at a higher um, quality setting so it took longer to print it probably might do a bit better but um, that's a score i'm giving it for the next item i'll be judging the printer against is overhanging surfaces so when you actually look at the front of the boat and also the sides where there's overhanging um, portions you can actually see there's a bit of um, filament hanging at key points um, there is kind of a dip at key points um, where it's meant to overhang but the printer you know it does successfully create the overhang but it's not very clean it has attempted to do it so i'll probably give it a five out of five just for definitely creating the overhang but it could be a lot cleaner the next item i'll be judging the printer against is sloping surfaces so you can see the actual roof of the actual cabin itself the actual slope at the front of the boat itself um, it's done quite well, you know, it's actually achieved a, a, a nice gradient but when you look really closely there's actually bumps at key points, it's not very smooth and you can actually see each individual layer created um, to actually create that gradient so I'll probably give it a 6 out of 10. And the last thing I'll judge um, the printer on is the small holes within the printer. So you can see the hole of the flue at the top, the hole on the, on the back of the boat, the holes on the front of the boat itself. Um, and it's done quite a good job. They are circular. I suppose the only thing that could be improved is just how smooth um, the corners and the edges around that circle are. But um, for now, I think it's done a good job and I'll probably give it a six out of 10. I'm sure there's loads of different tweaks and changes and settings that I could use um, to actually make the printer print a, a more better 3D Benji. So definitely leave a comment down below on any settings that you have used or any Facebook or Reddit groups that actually could help to actually make me achieve a better 3D print. These are the settings that I used um, and you know you can try using them yourself if you potentially want to <laughs> print a 3D Benji like I've printed. Um, thank you so much for watching, don't forget to subscribe and like. Thanks, bye!